Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 13. Welcome to EntrepreneurOnFire.com, where remarkable entrepreneurs share their inspiring story. Let their journey illuminate your path to success. And now, your host, John Dumas. Hey, Fire Nation, and thanks for joining me for another episode of Entrepreneur on Fire, the place for inspiring interviews with today's most successful entrepreneurs. Are you on our email list? If not, you are missing your chance at the $50 cash we give to one lucky subscriber every Wednesday. Would your Wednesday be a little better with 50 bucks in your pocket? Go to entrepreneuronfire.com or eofire.com if you're like me and can't spell entrepreneur to find out more. Question, have you been searching for an elite mastermind group? If yes, look no further than Ignite, an amazing mastermind of aspiring entrepreneurs. We have weekly webinars, amazing resources, forums, and huge giveaways, including a $200 cash giveaway every week. Come join our community at ignitemastermind.com. If you enjoy this free podcast, please show your love and support by heading over to eofire.com and clicking the subscribe and iTunes button at the top of our page. This will shoot you over to iTunes where you can leave a rating and review. To show my appreciation for your, hopefully, five-star rating and review, I will give you a shout-out at the top of an upcoming show telling the world just how cool you are. And now for our Fire Nation faithful who gave us a five-star rating and review. Rebecca Livermore, Online Marketing Girl, LDP Winnie, Jim Queso, Nate O'Leary, in RPW11, Fire Nation salutes you. Okay, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Steve Cam. Steve, are you prepared to ignite? Hell yeah, let's do this thing. All right. Steve is the rebel leader at nerdfitness.com. His main priority is to get desk jockeys, nerds, and average Joes into shape. The overarching theme of Nerd Fitness is to level up your life every single day. Focus on getting stronger, getting faster, having fun, and eating right, and your appearance will start to change as a result of that. Steve, I've given a little overview of Nerd Fitness. Why don't you tell us a little more about who you are and what you do? Absolutely. So, uh, like you said, my name is Steve Cam, and I'm a huge nerd. Um, A couple years back, I want to say probably four or five years ago, uh, I had this idea pop into my head. And I kind of came to this realization like, look, I've been strength training and and working on eating right for probably the better part of a decade. And uh, at that time, you know, through high school and college, I had strength trained and tried to get bigger and stronger and healthier. And it wasn't until after getting out of school that I finally found some success and worked with a trainer at a gym who completely changed my, my diet and my, and my workout routine. And I had more success in something like 30 days than I had had in the previous six years. And I had this idea pop into my head thinking, man, if it took me six years to find the right method to get healthy and to, to look and feel good about myself, there have to be other people out there that are struggling with the same things. But not only that, you know, a group of folks that would never go to a normal fitness website, whether they're you know, 350 pounds and, and sitting at a sitting at a cubicle or sitting in a cubicle or, uh, you know, maybe a college kid that spends a little too much time playing video games. I thought that I had a unique opportunity to reach out specifically to to nerds and desk jockeys and help them get healthy in a really, really unique way. So like I said, about five years ago, this idea popped into my head. I bought the domain nerdfitness.com and uh, about a year after that, finally decided to make the plunge and turn it into a blog. I just started writing articles while still working a full-time job. And after about a year and a half of cranking out content through Nerd Fitness, I quit my day job and have been focusing on Nerd Fitness and helping nerds get healthy uh, for the past two years now. Like I said, it's my full-time job. Awesome. And I am really excited to delve into that later in the interview. So let's start off with the next topic, which is a success quote. Because here at Entrepreneur on Fire, we like to start every show off with our guest's favorite success quote. It's kind of our way of getting the motivational ball rolling. So Steve, what do you have for us today? 
Uh, my favorite quote would have to come from one of my personal entrepreneurial heroes, uh, Richard Branson. And the quote is, screw it, let's do it. I had a chance to read Richard Branson's uh, Losing My Virginity uh, you know, autobiography last summer and absolutely fell in love with, with the concept. You know, I knew of Virgin, but I've never flown you know, Virgin Airlines or had been in, I don't even think I've been in a Virgin store to believe, uh, to be honest with you, but I knew this was a guy that, that really embodied a lot of things that I stood for and made a lot of decisions based on what felt good to him and kind of went with his gut, not because it was going to contribute to the bottom line necessarily or because it was the best decision for investors, but because it was the one that made him feel the most alive and made him feel great. You know, and I really, really appreciated that and, and have really grown as a result of reading that book and, and kind of tried to model myself along those lines. When I started Nerd Fitness, uh, I kind of went out of my way to do everything differently than every other fitness website out there. I don't have a single ad on my site. I don't try to sell a single supplement. Uh, I tell people, you don't even need a gym membership. Here are some free workouts that you can do. And I really, like I said, went out of my way to be different. And I think if I had, a, you know, looking back, if I had had an advisor that was a fitness blogger, they would have told me to do everything completely differently because you know, this is how things are done and this is how you make money and this is how you build a business. And to be honest with you, I just kind of said, screw it, like that doesn't make me feel good. Uh, that method of building a business does not appeal to me and would make me feel kind of sleazy. So instead, I'm just going to focus on helping people and creating content that is really unique and find a way to get through to, like I said, nerds and desk jockeys and, and help them out in any way possible and then build my business that way. And as a result, I think Nerd Fitness has grown far faster and allowed me to stand out in a really oversaturated, overcrowded market. Now, I love how you illustrated how you've used that quote, screw it, let's do it in the past. And I'm going to kind of put you on the spot here. How have you used that quote in the last three months? Uh, let's see, last three months, uh, we are actually in the process. And unfortunately, I can't, I can't go too far into into uh, this specifically, but I can, I can certainly tell you a little bit about it. We are in the process of building a fitness uh, game slash tracking software. We're calling it Rising Heroes. And it's this idea I've had for, gosh, I've, years and years and years. And like I said, I've grown up, I was, I was raised a nerd. I was raised on Nintendo, loving games like Legend of Zelda, Final Fantasy, Secret of Mana, uh, games like EverQuest, World of Warcraft, etc. And I've always had this idea in my mind that I wanted to turn my life into a video game. You know, the tagline for nerd fitness is level up your life. So uh, a couple months back, you know, and so after kind of dragging my feet for, for over a year and a half on this idea, I finally decided, you know what, the longer I wait and the more I continually just create ideas but never actually make step, put steps forward on this concept, um, you know, somebody else is going to come along and, 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 and do it. And so for that reason, I kind of talked talk to the two folks that I've hired uh, to work at Nerd Fitness and some other folks that uh, have now joined the Nerd Fitness team and say, hey guys, this is an idea we've sat on for two years. I think now's the time. I understand that you know we still have a lot to figure out. It's going to be a long, arduous process. It's going to cost us a lot of money and it's going to be really stressful and uh, I'm absolutely terrified of making this announcement, but you know, screw it, let's do it. This is an idea I've had, like I said, for years and years and years and something I just I can't get enough of. So I'm excited. Uh, we made the announcement through Nerd Fitness about a month ago, letting people know that we're in the process of building this game and fitness tracking software, and let people in. Uh, you know, people made donations to be part of a beta program. Right now, we're hiring more programmers. We found an art designer. Uh, we have even some guy offered to lend his voice as a voice actor, and somebody is a, a musician that wants to create orchestral scores and things of that nature. So. We're really kind of going for broke on this one. Um, I said it's going to be a fitness tracking software kind of combining things like World of Warcraft with fitness education to encourage folks to not only track their workouts but also help them get healthy, work with each other, and find a way to, to really enjoy this whole concept of living a healthier life and doing so in a really fun way. That's exciting, and I will make sure to keep Fire Nation updated as you're, you progress down this road because it sounds like a great product in the making and I love how you brought up the Legends of Zelda and the old Nintendo because that's that's what I grew up on myself. I was yep. a child of the 80s. I was like seven years old when 
Nintendo came in like 1986 or whenever it was, and I just never really progressed beyond that. And so a funny, quick little story, <laughs> just about six months ago, out of nowhere, I just was online and purchased a Nintendo and Zelda and Link and a couple of those fun games. And nice. every now and then I'll, I'll pull it out and play. And I just love that whole mentality. And I love that that is one of the things that spurred you to create what you're creating. And I'm really excited to track that. Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, I, I kind of noticed, you know, I, I looked at all the reasons why I was playing these games. And it's like, you get a character, you get to make him stronger and more experienced and more advanced. You get to explore all these great lands and do all these great things. It's like, why can't we apply those same tactics that get people addicted to video games to getting them healthy and getting them off their couch and outside? So that's really the concept that we're running with with Rising Heroes. Mm, great analogy. And let's use that to transition now into our next topic, which is failure, which are challenges that entrepreneurs run into and obstacles that we face, whether it be with weight or with exercise or with business. We all come up to these obstacles that we need to overcome. And we don't let these challenges and failures define us as people, but instead we really allow them to make us grow as an individual and inspire us and propel us forward. Can you tell us of an obstacle or a challenge that you faced at some point in your career and how you reacted to that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. So back when I started Nerd Fitness, I didn't really, I wasn't really sure what I was doing. I, I just knew like, okay, people start blogs and build audiences and then can eventually turn them into businesses. So, okay, I think I can kind of figure that out. So like I said, when I started, I was writing probably five articles a week for, uh, for nerdfitness.com while still working a full-time job. So I would work all day long and then come home and write an article every single night for, I did that for I think nine months. And no joke, in nine months, I had something like 90 subscribers, um, which is, you know, the equivalent, it's something like half a subscriber for every day that I published an article, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. For somebody publishing that amount of content in a world to specifically nerds where they want to spread content, uh, it means I clearly wasn't doing something right. So I spent, like I said, I spent nine months kind of sucking at blogging. I wasn't really sure what I was doing. I was cranking out very, very short uh, generic fitness articles because that's that's what I knew and that's the only thing that I saw existing in the world of fitness blogs and things of that nature. It's very short, like I said, short articles, top 10 lists, etc., things like that. And it wasn't until nine months in that I stumbled across Adam Baker over at Man vs. Debt who has since become a really good friend of mine um, and he published an article called How to Not Suck at Blogging. And I remember reading this article and kind of going down his checklist going, Yep, 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 okay, I suck at blogging. I was doing everything wrong, and it wasn't until I read that article that I kind of had this realization, like, dude, you run a website called Nerd Fitness, and you are not injecting any nerdy personality into your article. So after reading Baker's post, I decided I needed to make a switch. So instead of publishing five really long, I'm sorry, five really short articles a week, I switched to two articles a week that were very long, you know, oftentimes two, three thousand words, uh, full of nerdy references and my my personality. And honestly, after making that switch, nerd fitness almost took off overnight. Like from there, it, I think I doubled in size within the next week or two after that. And then since then, it's just continued to grow and grow and grow to a point now where we're closing. We just passed uh, twenty six thousand subscribers, and we're adding uh, at least a hundred plus people per day now to the email list. Wow, that is so exciting and. I'm such a fan and friend of Adam Baker. I had him on the show recently and he's such an inspirational speaker. I saw him down at Blog World where we hung out and then recently he had his event down in New York City that I attended for his movie premiere, which was very inspiring in and of itself. Can you share with us a lesson you learned from the failure that you just shared? Yes. Uh, the lesson I would say is if you're going to try to stand out in a crowded market, you have to be really freaking unique. Um, you know, I know there's so many people out there. There, like I said, there are probably a million, millions of fitness blogs out there, and there are millions of personal finance blogs, and there are millions of social media and entrepreneurship blogs and digital nomad blogs. Everybody is doing the same thing, and everybody sees what everybody else is doing, and then they copy it, and then they wonder why they're not standing out. That's kind of how I was for nine months. And it wasn't until I decided, like, you know what, if I'm going to stand out in a fitness industry where there are people that have, you know, 
30 years of fitness experience and, and crank out content, um, you know, th there, there was really no way for me to stand out trying to do the same thing as everybody else. And it wasn't until I decided to go in the complete opposite direction and rather than publish quick hits that get lots of people, I went for the really long, drawn-out articles that might turn off quite a few folks. However, the people that managed to stick all the way through to the end of those 2,000, 3,000-word articles, they're hooked. Within one article, they're like, I got it. This is a place I'm supposed to be, and this is a guy that I need to be listening to. So although Nerd Fitness still continued to grow slowly, it, uh, this change for me and injecting my personality and being really unique and you know, I, I'm, I'm fairly confident there are very, there aren't many places you can find articles on the internet about Darth Vader and, and deadlifts or Star Wars and, and push-ups or eating properly with Lego pictures. Like nerd fitness, I've, like I, said, I just, I knew I had to be different and I knew I had to present information in a really unique way and be incredibly helpful if I was ever going to find a way to break through the clutter and stand out in this super overcrowded market. And that was probably the biggest lesson I learned throughout all of this was just to be be different. Don't be afraid to take a stand and do things differently than everybody else in your industry or you're going to end up like everybody else in your industry. Thank you for sharing that lesson. That is truly going to resonate so well with our audience and is really a very clear-cut example of what not to do and what to do. So thank you for showing both sides of that. Absolutely. We're going to transition now into the next topic, which is the aha moment because at some point in your journey – you had a light bulb come on where you just said, aha, this is it. This is great. This is truly going to resonate with my clients. And you've spoken of light bulbs that you've had along the way, smaller ones, medium-sized ones that have really inspired you, kept you going. Can you speak to a bright light bulb that we have not yet mentioned that just really came on in your head and said, this is something that I want to do. This is my aha moment. Sure. I want to say it was probably about 17 months into my after starting Nerd Fitness. Like I said at the time, I was working a full-time job. And I know a lot of people hate their jobs. I actually loved my job. Uh, I worked for a company called Sixth Man out of Atlanta, Georgia that chartered full concert cruises. So what we would do is we would charter cruise ships out of the Caribbean and put you know four or five stages on board and 30 bands and turn these cruise ships into floating music festivals. Uh, my job was to write the content for each of the different events. Each one had a different genre. And then on top of that, I would get to go on the cruises and make sure everybody had a good time. So a big portion of my job was hanging out in the Caribbean with musicians on cruise ships. I want your job. Yeah, that was my job. I got paid, <laughs> I got paid to do that. And honestly, I remember like, I started Nerd Fitness as a hobby and eventually figured it might turn into something. And I remember about 17 months in, I was sitting on a cruise ship, and it was uh, a cruise that actually my folks, my parents both came on just as guests. They had a couple extra cabins left over and uh, invited us to invite our families to come on board. So I remember sitting there with my dad. Actually, we, we, the boat docked in, in Mexico. And I'm sitting with my dad at a bar in Mexico, and I remember thinking to myself, man, I'm seeing everybody else that worked for Six Man on this cruise ship and how much passion they have for what they're doing. And I thought to myself, man, I had that passion, and I've had it for so long, but I'm noticing that I'm having that passion more and more for nerd fitness. And as a guy that, you know, my favorite class in college was entrepreneurship, and uh, every the only class I really got anything out of, as I was an econ major, but the only classes I really got anything out of were my e or entrepreneurship classes. And it wasn't until that moment, and I'm sitting there, like I said, with my dad talking to him, that I realized, holy crap, you know, I've been... I've been trying to do working for other people all along, and in reality, I'm sitting on something I feel like could, to quote Steve Jobs, you know, allow me to put my put a dent in the universe. Like, this is the way I can leave my mark, and the only way that's going to happen is if I have the ability to focus full time on nerd fitness. So I'm talking to my dad, and obviously, as a you know, you can imagine, you have a son telling you he's going to stop going on cruises and hanging out with musicians, and instead hang out with nerds online and help them lose weight, like. Are you crazy? Uh, fortunately, my dad was super supportive, and I told him, "Dad, I have to, I have to quit Sixth Man, and I have to focus on Nerd Fitness because I, you know, this is the defining like I get it. This is the, this cruise solidified the decision for me that I need to be moving on and I need to be doing my own thing. And Nerd Fitness is the way that I can change the world." And he said, "Well, you know what? We worry about your brother and we worry about your sister, but you know, we don't really worry about you. So if this is a decision you have to make, 
even if you don't have any money saved up or a business plan yet or haven't brought any revenue in, I feel like you're sitting on something pretty cool. And if this is something you feel you can turn into an actual business, you have all the support in the world from, from me and your mom. So I thought that was super helpful. I ended up quitting, uh, went in a couple of days after coming back from that cruise and talked to the company, tears in my eyes, told them I had to leave because I had to work on building my own company. And they couldn't have been more supportive. And actually, like I said, when I quit, I had yet to make a single dollar with Nerd Fitness. Nothing had come in yet. And it's not because I had tried to create something and failed. It's just because I had waited 18 months building up as much goodwill and uh, support and and letting people know, like, hey, I'm here for the right reason. I'm just giving you information. I just want to help. And about a month after I quit my job, I put out my first product through the site. It was a, you know, a group of fitness plans and and diet information and things of that nature to help people that were brand new to fitness and managed to sell enough of them that it bought me a couple more months of income. And then they just continued to sell pretty steadily from that moment on. Steve, I love that story for a number of reasons. But the main reason is, is on my show, so many entrepreneurs say, John, I was just hating my job. I was stuck in corporate America. I was stuck in a cubicle. I was stuck traveling seven days a week. And I finally broke away. For you, you were loving what you were doing, but your passion grew so large for nerd fitness that it overwhelmed your love for your job you currently had and the support that you had from that job and the financial um, security blanket that you had as well. And th the fact that you broke away from that is just really inspiring. I definitely applaud you for that. Thanks. Yeah, it was a very tough decision. Like I said, I'd, I'd spend probably... So I want to say collectively probably three or four weeks a year on a cruise ship with some of like my favorite musicians um, floating around the Caribbean, like interviewing them, getting on stages and announcing them to crowds of thousands and walking around cruise ships and making sure everybody had a good time and to turn that down for an unproven website about getting overweight nerds in shape was certainly a big risk. Uh, but it was one I knew I had to take because it just it felt it felt right to me. And uh, I honestly do not regret that decision for a second. I am still in. I'm still great friends with all the people at that old company, and, and now I just get it. Now I just go on the cruises as a guest and and enjoy myself on the other side of the wall. Mm, best of both worlds, Steve. Have you had an I've made it moment? Um. Yeah, honestly, I did. Uh, it was probably two two years into probably about two years into nerd fitness. And how long ago was that? So this was December of 2010. Okay. Uh, at that point, I had been full time with Nerd Fitness for about six months, and things were going okay, but not great. Uh, I was selling enough books to certainly survive, and 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 the website was growing, and more and more people were finding out about it. But it wasn't until December of 2010 that I really had that holy crap, this is going to work out moment. Uh, I had decided a couple weeks before that actually to save money, that I wanted to start traveling a lot. So I decided I was going to sell my car, my apartment in Atlanta, Georgia's lease was up for rent. I'm um, so, you know, up at the end of the month, at the end of December. So I decided that in order to save money, it was actually going to be cheaper for me to travel. I'm big into travel hacking, uh, learning from, I learned pretty much all of my tips from Chris Gillibo, who was another big hero of mine. And I followed his advice and acquired a boatload of travel hacking miles, uh, you know, air, uh, miles through different airlines. And I managed to book this really crazy trip through Australia, New Zealand, Southeast Asia, back to the States, over to Europe. And I booked this entire 35,000 mile trip. And the whole thing ended up costing me only $418. And I did that because, you know, I, I knew how to, how to kind of game the system and get points using credit cards without racking up any debt. And was able to book this crazy trip. So I wrote this really long, in-depth, very nerdy article on nerd fitness called How to Travel the World for 418 Bucks. It really had nothing to do with nerd fitness. You know, it didn't have anything relating to diet or exercise, but it was going to consume the next year of my life. And I decided I wanted to let people know, hey, I'm going to be traveling like crazy. This is another way that I'm going to level up my life. I'm going to visit these other countries and cross a bunch of things off my list, like, you know, scuba dive in the Great Barrier Reef, go to the Great Wall of China, etc., uh, so I wrote this article not really knowing what to expect. And within, I think, 20 minutes of publishing it, or 30 minutes of publishing it, I got an email from a, sense, or email from a friend saying, dude, you just hit number one on Hacker News. And then about 20 minutes after that, I got an email from the 
um, senior editor at Gizmodo saying, we want to republish your article. It's like, holy crap. Uh, I, none of these things had ever happened to me before in the past. I didn't even know, you know what was going to happen. So I said, absolutely, if you want to republish it, go for it. And for the next week, I think that article got viewed on Gizmodo like 400,000 times and was their number two how-to article of 2010. It sent uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of new people and thousands of new subscribers to Nerd Fitness. And although, like I said, the article wasn't really related to, to diet and exercise, um, it still sent a lot of people to the site. And when they stumbled across Nerd Fitness, a lot of people's first thoughts were, wow, this guy has been around for, what, for, for quite a while. How did I not know about this before? So it ended up spurring on a tremendous amount of ebook sales and really padded my income uh, for those first couple months of traveling that I hadn't honestly expected to have. So I remember that Friday, I think it was a Thursday or a Friday, um, jumping around my apartment in Atlanta and, uh, and just going crazy thinking like, man, this is all, you know two years in, busting my ass finally you know after publishing 300 articles one of them one of them gets some serious play and uh and brought so many more people to nerd fitness that that joined the community and signed up for for updates and and even decided to purchase some of the things available through nerd fitness so that was my all right i've made it moment um that was completely out of the blue and very unexpected that's a great i've made it moment and i love the story about gizmodo you give some pretty good numbers. Like you traveled for four hundred and eighteen dollars. You had four hundred thousand extra views because of this. So you're obviously a numbers guy. How much do you think that article that was published on Gizmodo ended up bringing in for you dollar wise? Oh, great question. Um, I'm gonna say let's say it's tough because that article just continually got viewed. Uh, at this point, honestly, if I had to guess, that one article through because of Gizmodo Hacker News, I'm gonna say. Easily five figures. Wow! Thank you for sharing that. That's a great I'm gonna number. Say, yeah, ten at least ten thousand, probably more, like maybe twenty. Over you know, now that it's been a year and a half since that has happened, um, I'm gonna say at least at least probably twenty thousand dollars worth of new people discovering nerd fitness and purchasing things or purchasing Chris Gillibo's frequent flyer book, which I was an affiliate for because, like I said, that book taught me pretty much everything I know about travel hacking. Yeah, I would say easily. Uh, if I had to ballpark at twenty twenty thousand dollars is not is not may, probably more on the low end of how much it is brought in. Well, thank you for sharing that, and that's just what's so exciting about the online world as we know it today is that creating great content can just lead to great things, and you're living proof of that. And we're actually going to use that to flex into our next topic, which is your current business. Now, you have mentioned that you have something you're kind of hush hush about that's upcoming. You gave us a little insight, and we definitely appreciate that as Fire Nation. What's something else that's really exciting you about your business today? Uh, honestly, the, the thing that excites me most about Nerd Fitness is, is just the continual growth of the Nerd Fitness community. I have never encountered a more passionate group of people that have never met each other in real life. Uh, if you get a chance to go on Nerd Fitness, we have, a, a mess, you know, we have message boards on there, and we're just about, I think today, about to pass 9,000 members on the message boards alone. And... Every day, whenever I get a chance, I go on those message boards, and it's very, very cool to see. You know, I go to uh, if you go to the what do I call it, the newbie lodge or the shoot, newbies hall or beginners hall, whatever. I, I'm I'm blanking on the name of what I actually call that section. Um, but everybody posts like, "Hey, this you know, this is my name, and this is this is kind of who I am and what I'm struggling with." And every one of those threads has at least half a dozen people commenting and saying, "This is great. Thanks for thanks for joining Nerd Fitness." What else can we help you with? And all these people are just so supportive of each other. And it's it's very, very cool for me to see like, hey, you know, I kind of I kind of got this ball rolling years ago, but I'm just one tiny piece in this massive community of folks all over the world helping each other and supporting each other and offering up advice to each other to live better lives. Um, you know, Nerd Fitness started as a boy in his blog and turn into this really epic community of folks all over the place. And not only that, but we generally don't have fights. We don't have, you know, there's very little uh, controversy on there. Everybody understands, like, look, we're all here for the same reasons. We're all trying to be better people, and we're all going to get there with different paths. So although we might not agree with each other on specific things, we're all working towards the same goal, a leveled-up life. And just the growth and to see 
how quickly and how passionate people have become about nerd fitness and being part of the nerd fitness rebellion, which is the name of our community, um, has just been awesome for me to see. And I, I enjoy every day seeing those numbers grow and seeing more people discover nerd fitness and, and then hearing success stories from folks that have been in the community for a couple months and have really been able to transform themselves. I love that. And here at Entrepreneur on Fire, we have Ignite, which is an elite mastermind membership for entrepreneurs. And that's the kind of community that I'm always continually trying to build is the one that you're speaking of. Do you have a membership site at Nerd Fitness? Uh, not necessarily a membership. Um, actually, everything through the message boards is all 100% free and there are no ads supporting it. So there are no ads anywhere on Nerd Fitness. Um, and like I said, there are no ads on the message boards. It costs me quite a bit of money to run the site. I think we're up to, we're getting something like 2.5 million page views a month these days. Uh, and it's all done because I wanted people to know that, hey, if you're going to, if you need a place to hang out and if you need to get advice, you know, is, is pure and not because somebody's paying me to say it, Nerd Fitness is your home. Um, I do offer, you know, ebooks and things of that nature and guides that people can purchase if they're interested, but everything else is free. I offer free workout plans, free diet advice. The message boards are all free. Um, everything that I possibly can, I make free for everybody just so that, you know, I understand that a lot of people are brand new to this and don't know where to get started and aren't ready to make a financial investment. That's more than okay. They can still find all the information they need through Nerd Fitness. And if they happen to want more information or need more specific advice, they can purchase it. And, and that's how Nerd Fitness has grown through, uh, through that avenue. That's great. And I just love the story that you say that the people on your message boards actually take ownership for Nerd Fitness that may have been there a little longer, the veterans, so to speak, and help people that are just arriving. That's just a great community and one that I would like to be a part of. So I, I love hearing that. And we're going to use that, Steve, to transition to my favorite part of the show, which is called the lightning round. This is where I provide you with a series of questions and you come back with a series of amazing and mind-blowing answers. Sound like you're ready? Yep. What was the number one thing holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? Uh, fear. Honestly, I was terrified of failing. Um, you know, I was building Nerd Fitness while working a full-time job and I just continually pushed it off. I knew I had to create something that I would be able to sell in order to start generating revenue to quit my job. But because I had the comfort of the job, I just continually pushed, pushed it off. It wasn't until I finally said, dude, you're never going to get this out. Quit now and give yourself no other option but to succeed. Um, and that's, that's the only way I think Nerd Fitness is actually able to take off that. I spent a couple years building up Nerd Fitness and then finally pulled the cord and forced myself to find a way to, to sink or swim. And I've been swimming ever since. What is the best business advice you ever received? Honestly, I think, and I don't remember who, who said it to me, but it's something along the lines of, you know, be insanely helpful and ask for nothing in return and you can find a way to build a business. And that's how Nerd Fitness has grown. Like I said, I've built Nerd Fitness. I spent 18 months before asking for a single dollar. A lot of people start a business or start a blog and immediately fill it up with ads or start selling ebooks within five minutes. You know, like they're, they haven't necessarily gained the trust of their readers in order to be able to offer that. And then they get super disappointed when people aren't, aren't shelling over their money to somebody they just met. Um, Great message. Yeah. So I spent, I spent, like I said, 18 months through Nerd Fitness just being as helpful as possible and asking for nothing in return. Uh, pretty much anything, and, and Nerd Fitness has really grown along those paths, and it's been very cool to see the things that have come out of Nerd Fitness, even though I haven't asked for them. Uh, I've guest lectured at Google, Google Dublin, Facebook, and I had a TEDx talk, and none of those talks did I reach out for. I was contacted by people at each of those companies because they loved Nerd Fitness and hoped that I could come in and talk at those places. So um, I've gone out of my way to just be helpful, and the rest has kind of taken care of itself. Great. I look forward to viewing that TEDx talk, and I will link that up in the show notes for sure. What is something that's working for you or your business right now? Focusing on productivity. I, for the longest time, up until honestly probably two months ago, really struggled with being productive during the day. I was one of those people I would spend all day long on my computer being busy, and then I would spend all night doing the work that I should have been able to get done during the day. So over the past two months, I've put a tremendous focus on becoming far more productive 
you know, I've done things like install programs on my computer to block myself from certain websites. I've completely overhauled how I handle my email. And as a result now, I get so much more done during the day than I ever have in the past. And it's freed me up to spend way more time doing things that make me happy, like playing golf or more time learning new skills or exercises or playing more video games, you know, doing things that make me happy. I spent two years or probably actually three, three and a half years struggling to find a way to be productive and just telling myself that 14 hour days were, were normal and that's what I was expecting. Uh, after making these changes over the past two months, I've understood that productivity is a skill that can be learned. And if you do put the time and effort in and really analyze where your time is going and how you can adjust it, uh, you can get so much more done in such a shorter amount of time, freeing you up to do things that you love and hang out with people that you love. What is the best business book that you've read in the last six months? Last six months, uh, Steve Jobs' autobiography, which was fascinating. I had no idea what a jerk he was. Yeah, I just watched his uh, autobiography. That was incredible. Oh, it's, it was amazing what a jerk he was. But on top of that, amazing, just his vision and how he, how he planned out everything and and how he knew, you know, he he made decisions based on 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 where he saw the industry going, not where it was, and that's allowed Apple to really do what it's done. Uh, that and then another book, it's not really business related, but I just read Ayn Rand's uh, Ayn or Ayn Rand's The Fountainhead, and absolutely love the whole concept of people of of uh, specifically it was about architecture and being very unique in that aspect, but. How it spoke specific, you know, how it spoke to people that aren't afraid to be unique uh, against those people that are terrified of standing out and um, and yeah, I absolutely loved it. Uh, flew through it in in a couple of weeks, even though it's like freaking you know a thousand page book or something. It's huge, and I highly recommend Atlas Shrugged as well. Love that too. That was last summer's reading. So the last question, Steve, is my favorite, and it's kind of a tricky one. So you can take your time and really digest it before you answer. If you woke up tomorrow morning and you still had all the experience and knowledge and money that you currently have today, but your business had completely disappeared, forcing you to start with a clean slate, which is a situation that many of our listeners find themselves in right now, a clean slate, what would you do in the next seven days? Buy a beach hut in the Virgin Islands and open a bar. No, I'm just kidding. A little uh, risky business. I like it. <laughs> exactly, right? Uh, no, honestly, what I would do is I would spend 100 bucks on hosting and a new domain name. And I would set up things like Facebook and Twitter. And I would spend seven days, probably not sleeping, cranking out as much content as possible that is very unique and helpful to people in a particular field. You know, if I wasn't doing nerd fitness, I would pick another industry that I had a lot of passion about and find a way to apply my unique personality and a unique spin on that particular topic. And then start reaching out to people through Facebook and Twitter and finding people that are in that industry or folks that maybe aren't in that particular industry but are doing things that I truly admire and just reach out to them and, and let them know that they're an inspiration to me and that I, I love what they're doing and, and begin forming those relationships. Again, asking for nothing in return, but starting those relationships with people and um, really you know, building things from, from the ground up, bootstrap it as much as possible. Uh, very similar, I, I haven't spent a dollar on advertising um, for Nerd Fitness. Like I, said, I don't have ads and I haven't bought an ad myself. So everybody that finds Nerd Fitness is through word of mouth, uh, which I think is a far more valuable customer than somebody that is found through an ad. So it might be slower going to start, but if you can find a way to really connect with people and just be insanely helpful and useful and asking for very asking for nothing in return a- until a couple months down the road, letting them know that you're creating something that they might be interested in, uh, that would probably be the best way to start. Um, you know, I obviously there are certainly other ways to do it, but as far as I know, that would be the best way for me in particular, a guy that absolutely loves writing and loves helping people to get a business um, started off the ground. Steve, you have given us some great actionable advice and we are all better for it. Give Fire Nation one last piece of guidance, then give yourself a plug and then we'll say goodbye. Don't be afraid to be different. I know I've plugged that so many times today through in this talk, but honestly, I don't think I would be where I am today if I wasn't different. Uh, it's okay to stand out, and it's okay to piss people off. Nerd Fitness, I, I'm a huge fan of strength training, and 
I'm a huge fan of a particular type of diet. And for people that are marathon runners, you know, if you happen to be a vegan marathon runner, I'm probably not the website for you. I'm more than okay with that. Don't try to be for everybody. Be unique. Find your small niche and group of people and find a way to be so helpful and personable to those folks that they can't help but feel like they know you personally, even if you've never met. Those people are going to be the people that spread your name and the word of your website and your company. Be, treat them like gold. Um, don't be afraid to be unique and go out of your way to be helpful without asking for things in return. Mm. As Michael Stelzner said in his book Launch and on the show as well, let those people be your fire starters. Absolutely. Uh, and as far as the plug goes, just swing on by nerdfitness.com. Um, come check it out. It's thousands of folks all over the world working and helping each other live better lives. I publish two free articles a week. If you do need specific workout advice, I offer some some fitness guides through the site. But even if you never spend a dollar on Nerd Fitness, that's totally okay. Come check out the community, hang out with the folks on there, and I do quite a bit of traveling. So if you get a chance to see on the site that I'm going to be visiting your city and I'm doing a meetup, come on down and hang out. Awesome, Steve. Thank you again, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Level up. <laughs> Thanks, John. Hey guys, this is John Lee Dumas signing off. Remember to subscribe to our email list for your chance to win $50 cash every Wednesday. Fire Nation, my one call to action to you today is this. If you enjoyed this free podcast and want to show your love, head over to eofire.com, click the subscribe and iTunes button at the top of our page, and you'll be shot over to iTunes to leave a rating and review. To show my appreciation for your hopefully five-star rating, I will give you a shout-out at the top of an upcoming show, and then you can tweet about how awesome you are. Seriously, though, it would really mean a lot to all of us here at Fire Nation that work so hard to bring you this content five days a week. Until next time, Fire Nation, prepare to ignite. Thank you for joining us at EntrepreneurOnFire.com, your daily dose of inspiration. Prepare to ignite.